Hello, welcome to this short informational on radiation, coal ash, in proximity to the Mobile Bay area. I am a research professor trained in pediatrics, medical genetics and teratology and a former chair of the Department of Medical Genetics at the University of South Alabama in Mobile. I currently perform research concerning Chernobyl radiation impacts on child development as a research professor at the University of California. This version is oriented toward the public and there is another one oriented toward educators where further explanations of basic science aspects are provided. My motive to create this informational was primarily that Mobile is my home, my awareness that it's also a home for so many others, that it is a wonderful place to live, and that Mobile, unfortunately, is confronted with the possibility of an impending disaster. This risk relates to radioactive coal ash dump in proximity to the city. Few are aware that coal ash can be more radioactive than nuclear waste. That this dump leaks already for decades, that it can rupture, can be devastated by a tornado, a hurricane, or some other torrential rains or other causes and spill tons and tons of coal ash which is radioactive. In addition, I have the reasons that radiation causes birth defects, causes mental retardation, leukemia, cancer, that children and the unborn are particularly sensitive to radiation damage that there are no safe radiation exposure levels, contrary to what you may read uh, somewhere else, that radioactive uranium is a coal ash component, and that the radiation from uranium persists forever. It is self-evident for all of us that if you know of a potential disaster, you should do everything possible to prevent it. This menace to the population and ecology of our whole area is very troublesome because Mobile Bay is a rich repository of life and it's a wonderful uh, purpose and reason to stimulate the development, the industry of tourism and fisheries. The menace is represented by the coal ash dump that can be resolved easily by the Alabama Power Company if they so wish. There is beyond doubt that our area is very rich in a diversity of species, but it is also a fact that virtually all of them are either endangered or threatened. This is largely due to the extensive pollution of biochemical international and national corporations that were attracted by former leaders of this community without second thoughts about what it was going to do to the fisheries which are virtually eliminated by the pollution inherent in these industries. And if so many species are already threatened, what makes you think or what makes the leaders think that humans are somewhat exempt? We know that the unborn is many, many times more sensitive than the adults, but both belong to the species we talk about above here, and the genetic mechanisms, chromosomes and so on, are equally affected whether you are human or non-human. It is beyond dispute that the bay is already a national 
repository known to be one of the highest of arsenic and mercury and certainly we have suffered from the BP oil spill. So the question is, are we to add more pollutants to this bay? And are we to, for the very first time, include pollutants that are radioactive? And how is that going to impact, for instance, your willingness to let your children play in the water of Mobile Bay if you think it is radioactive? This issue, in my view, yes, it can be an issue for Alabama or Alabama Power Company. It may concern profit issues or legal issues, whether this or other industries follow regulations. But most of all, in my view, this is a home issue. This is an issue of your home, of your community, of your community leaders. And how are you represented by those who you have elected to take care of our home? Because this is a short presentation for the public, certain scientific aspects of carbon, coal, and relationship of coal ash and so on with heavy metals, forms of energy and relationships with radiation, are not going to be presented. They are included in the version for educators. We are going to skip these aspects in the interest of brevity. Please focus on facts. Postpone interpretations. Avoid your or any other interpretations. And here are some facts. Mercury, brain damage, prenatal damage are a fact. Arsenic damages the brain causes cancer and is far more damaging to the unborn. That's a fact. Radiation is a cause of birth defects, a cause of cancer, and is also a major disruptor of embryonal development. That's a fact. Heavy metals are teratogenic. That is, they cause birth defects. Arsenic is a heavy metal. Mercury is likewise a heavy metal. Coal ash is a concentrate of heavy metals, including uranium, which is a reproductive poison. But uranium is also naturally radioactive, and this radioactivity perdures forever. Share these facts with others. Then, there are facts about where all of this is coming from. Well, obviously, it comes from the polluters. Coal ash Coal ash, I'm sorry, comes mostly from Alabama Power Company. This company is privileged to be categorized as a utility. I certainly enjoy having electricity. But utilities are supposed to serve the communities that harbor them. And therefore, Alabama Power may be very interested in resolving these issues because they may not be fully aware of the implications of radioactivity in coal ash. Other health and reproductive poisons are dumped by multiple large industries. They are mostly large. And because there are many, solutions are complex. But to resolve the problem of coal ash, the advantage is that Alabama Power Company alone can remove the dump and therefore this issue will vanish. They can afford it. They know how to do it. The question is that they should develop a goodwill toward all of us. Then come the issues related to leadership, responsibilities and responses. You and I are interested in how our leaders take their responsibilities and how they respond when they have to act. Again, Ignore declarations, look at facts. See whether the health risk, the health risk posed by pollutants are taken into account. See if there are in cost-benefit analyses considerations of health. In most cost-benefit analyses that I have seen, health is ignored. 
Budgets for prevention of public health impacts are virtually devoid of such line item. If there is no budget, nobody will take care of this. Public disclosures of conflict of interest are also frequently lacking. Polluters should not have a voice in regulations. They, sh they shall not be self-regulated. They may educate us. They may report compliance, but they should not set policies. That should be seen as a conflict of interest. So to start, learn facts. Avoid consuming, uh, confusing facts with interpretations. Once you have learned facts, share them. If you don't, knowing facts achieves very little. Practically, it achieves nothing. So share facts, act yourself, watch the reactions of others, and react to the reactions. That is the gel that strengthens the community. So what are the facts that you can share? And look watch reactions when you share them. Carbon contains radioactive elements. Carbon ash is a concentrate of these elements. Carbon ash contains not only heavy metals, but also among them uranium. And there are other heavy metals that are likewise radioactive. Even lead can be radioactive. Uranium radioactivity lasts forever. And this, although it is hard to sometimes understand, is a golden rule. There is no safe dose of exposure to radioactivity. No matter how little, you always pay a price. All of us get a chest x-ray from time to time. And one, who knows who, but one of us is going to pay the price. And so, what is the price that we pay? We pay the price for chromosome damage and genetic mutations and teratogenesis. That is, that that chest x-ray may result in health effects on you. That is, it may prompt a cell to become cancerous or may impact your child. If you are a male, you may be producing abnormal sperm. If you are a female, you may have uh, problems with your oversights. So in short, and to start, learn the facts, and then share, act, react. What can be done about it? M much. As I said, Alabama Power can resolve this issue. What is needed is goodwill. They need to know as much about this issue as you do, and perhaps they don't. They can remove the coal ash and to a safe location, just like it was done in other states. Now let's move on to what is found in the media. Be aware of interpretations, diversions. They are well, and well done and attractive, but fundamentally, many of them are lies. Polluters engage armies of public relation outlets to block public access to facts, and they are good at it. And the media likes the elegance of their products, but nonetheless, they are diversions. Fundamentally, they are lies. These reputable reports about coal ash being radioactive or about, or about coal ash causing long-lasting damage have unleashed a whole avalanche of false news. So this is the reason why I call your attention to it. For example, here is a big mountain of coal ash. Where is it from? What's this truck coming from? Where is Uniontown? Well, Uniontown is somewhere in Alabama, and we have learned quite a bit about the process of what sort of a business is this? Why is Alabama taking radioactive coal ash from another state? What did our leaders do? They accepted it. They even tried to sue this community for unwillingness to receive it. What you learn about this 
What I learned from this is important because it may happen to us in Mobile. Now coming to coal, and as stated already, it is radioactive to different degrees depending where it is coming from. Where are those coal mines? Different degrees of radioactivity, but radioactivity nonetheless. Coal per se may not be the main attention center because it is when it is burned and concentrated into a much smaller volume of ash this radioactivity does not go away, it becomes a concentrate. Further details about coal are omitted here, and you can see the uh, companion version where we go into the chemistry, physics, radiation, uh, radioactivity, atomic uh, nuclei, and how is all of that converging to cause birth defects. Suffice it to say at this point that coal attracts. Coal is an eager binder, likes to bind with other metals, and these are radioactive, and they are often attached to coal. You can find much more by going to these website addresses. Think of the radiation in the coal as mainly coming through four horses. Think of them as the horses of Apocalypsis. Apocalypsis means that they're death-bringing. And the factors that ride on their back are carbon radioactive, uranium radioactive, thorium radioactive, and radium radioactive. And that is the essence of I need to include here and the rest is in the other version. Let's jump now all the way to us, to you, and to one cell. This is one single cell, and these are the chromosomes. And you see black dots polluting those chromosomes. They are attached. They became a component of the chromatin of chromosomes. Uh, but these are radioactive elements. So instead of being a normal sugar, let's say, yeah, this is sugar, but it happens to be radioactive, it's glowing. And at some point it may explode. And when that explodes and releases that energy, it may kill the cell. So we don't know which cell will have an explosion, but we know that the more of these dots and the longer they are there, the more likely one of them is going to harm the cell. So uranium derivatives, uranium degrades, releases energy, it becomes thorium. And then if it explodes or if it is partitioned, it may become cesium. And if this one is even partitioned further, it may become tritium. All of them radioactive, all of them unstable. This cell contains tritium and the chromosomes reveal its presence. And what is this telling us? Chernobyl accident you heard is not an accident, but let's say that's what they call it, was a nuclear reactor driven by the radioactivity of uranium. It was a chain reaction. This uranium would shooting rays of energy and breaking uranium atoms one after the other, that's why it's called the chain. But it exploded because it generated so much heat that they didn't cool it, and the whole thing went with a big bang and polluted the whole of Europe. It actually reached Newfoundland, and the pollution was virtually universal. The difference was that the pollution was proportionately higher the closer you came to this exploded facility. Once the uranium split roughly in two halves, the uranium is over 260 weight. This, as you can see, is 132 or 137. This is the most common element that is in the ground in the vicinities of these installations in Ukraine. 
We studied exposed pregnant women to this environment, and we found high levels of incorporated cesium, those dots you saw, we found them highly elevated in those pregnant women that lived in the polluted regions. At the same time, in the same regions, the population rates of malformations were equally elevated. Thus, the conclusion is that the Chernobyl radiation Call it big, call it small, call it red or blue, it doesn't matter. The point is, it is associated with higher rates of congenital malformations. But, here is what I said, the official interpretations. Here is an interpretation by an official agency. And from this interpretation, they manufacture a dogma. They say that exposures to ionizing radiation are too low in Ukraine to cause detectable impacts on birth defects rates. Well, if you are blind and stupid, you are going to detect nothing. And if you are not willing to do studies, you are going to then use a dogma. The official agencies did not recommend a study. No studies are needed, they say. So who is capable of contradicting them? They are like saints. But we did the studies and here they are, a report, and a report, and another report, and another report in the prestigious journals. And there is little doubt that Chernobyl radiation is a cause of malformations. So then, what about Mobile? We had a Chernobyl 1986 in Ukraine. When are we going to have something like it in Mobile, Alabama? We sure are going to become famous, but is it going to be a good way of being famous? When is this disaster going to happen? And why shouldn't we remove it? We know how. We can. We have the capital. And it's all a matter of convincing the people of the Alabama Power Corporation that this is their responsibility to clean up this act. As it stands, the proposal is that they're going to let it leak because this is leaking under the ground into an aquifer. They're going to just cover this and promise that they're not going to add any more. Thank you very much. But that's not a solution. That's a patch. That's sort of a not real. So, chronic exposures to low level of Chernobyl radiation are associated with congenital anomalies. What about in Mobile? Why should we be exempt of the same? The risk anticipated is a risk that must be prevented. If you believe in it, then I think you should take some action. It is an issue for the local leadership. If we don't take care, why should anyone else? So, this brings me then to the end. This can be dug up and removed. Putting a little plastic layer on top and nothing underneath is not a solution. So, Alabama Power has the potential, the money, the know-how to remove it, except that at this point doesn't have the will. Thank you for your attention. And I hope that you will visit us again and share this presentation with others. Good day.